Hey everybody, this is Knives Monroe and this is going to be a heavy one and we do a lot of spoiler warnings in this day and age and we do a lot of trigger warnings and I feel like 99.9% .9 of the time they're, I can't hear myself, I don't want to hear myself, 99.9% uh, .9 of the time they're, nobody means them when they say spoiler alert, they don't really mean it, they don't really care <laughs> when they say trigger warning, I don't know if they care most of the time but uh this is a trigger warning. I'm going to spend some time on it because I'm going to be talking about suicide. I'm going to be talking about mental health and depression, and I'm I'm not an expert on this. I'm only going to be talking about how I feel, how I felt, what I've gone through, what I've experienced, and so it's very subjective, but I can say without a shadow of a doubt that if you've ever struggled or have battled depression or have... Um, contemplated suicide, don't watch this because it might exacerbate something. It might trigger you. And it is not my intention to do that. This isn't really for you, somebody that's struggling. I'm offering no hope here. I'm offering um, no solutions. This isn't really for you. So who's this for? And why am I doing this? I'll explain. Who is this for? This is for people who, who don't understand and it not for a lack of empathy, but just for a lack of uh, communicating with people that are this open and honest about this. Uh, this is for those people who don't understand why anybody would even consider this. And uh, I'm more so talking to someone who's uninitiated, who doesn't understand. For those of you that understand all too well what I'm talking about, I'm probably saying something you've already said to yourself. And so very long trigger warning, but I mean this. Um, if I saw something like this when I was <sighs> struggling, when I'm in the thick of it, this could set me off. Um, so true, earnest trigger warning. Don't watch this if you're feeling away. Um, so I have my phone right here and I wrote down a list. So I'll be looking and navel gazing. So I apologize for that. I'll try to cut around that. Um, these are seven reasons why I haven't killed myself. And... It's funny, like I wrote this two weeks ago when I was in the thick of it and it, I just wrote it down as a way of coping, some sort of coping mechanism. And right now I don't feel this way. So it's weird talking about it now, but I could only talk about it now. I couldn't talk about it when I was in the thick of it. I couldn't make a video when I was in the thick of it. So here we are. Um, the reasons why I haven't done it. Number one, I don't want to go to hell. I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. I don't know if I really believe in heaven or hell. When I'm there sitting in church and I'm hearing them talk about it, I'm kind of like, I can take it or leave it. I have a relationship with my creator. I have a relationship with, you know, Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. And a lot of what I do is in honor of, of God. And I don't talk about that often. And then when I contemplate these dark thoughts I guess that's when things get really, really real. And I realize I don't want to have to, it's, you know, real life is hard enough. I don't want to have to pay for that if there is an afterlife. That's just the truth. And for what it's worth, you know, when you read the Bible, Jesus Christ suffered so much, he does provide a hope, his story and his demise, you know, the pain and anguish and torture that he went through, not to glamorize that or to fixate on that, but was so, when it's all said and done for us today, that we'll be one in the post-death future, right? So why the fuck would I want to spend that in hell? I don't. And when you're in the thick of feeling like shit and you cannot control your emotions... I, you know, you look for little particles of light at the end of the tunnel. God, this is going to be a long video. I did not want this to be a long video, um, but there's no way to make this catchy and cool. Um, when you're looking for lights at the end of the tunnel, if the afterlife provides that sort of refuge or solace for you, take it. Because if you can just make it through another day, if you can just go to sleep and wake up, um, and postpone those thoughts. Sometimes that's all you can do. So that's why that's number one on my list. I don't want to go to hell and I am a believer. So that's one of the reasons why I haven't killed myself. 
Number two, I, I love my family and uh, I love my family more than I want to die when I'm in the thick of it. Uh, it hurts, but I can't do that to my two kids and I can't do that to my spouse. Uh, I have to remind myself that. Um, believe it or not, it was way harder when I didn't have them. But thank God I do have them. And, you know, I feel like this one's a little self-explanatory, but knowing that I could poison the spirit and mind of my children by going through these actions, I have to remind myself that I will afflict them with whatever I have, potentially, if I do that, and that is more painful than death. Or so I have to look at it that way sometimes. Uh, number three, this one's a little dark. So once again, skip this one. <laughs> Honestly, skip this one. Skip one minute ahead if you can, because this one is irreprehensible and borderline irresponsible to talk about. But I just want to be honest with you. So uh, the, the third reason why I don't and haven't killed myself is because I rather hurt myself instead. So what does that mean? That could, you know, self-sabotage or, you know, hurting yourself. There's a gamut. There's a spectrum. There's, I'm going to eat a box of donuts, which is a form of self-abuse. It just is. You wouldn't feed your kid, force feed your, your child a box of donuts. I think that's like child abuse. If you did that, if you force fed them, um, so hurting yourself dietarily speaking, because what, what that does to the mind, drugs, which I don't do, but I have done, but I don't do that. Um, but that's what I mean by kind of like, you know, self-harm. I rather hurt myself instead. Um, I have self-mutilated in the past and it took my mind off of other things. I also haven't done that in a long time too, but hurt yourself can also mean not show up to a meeting. Hurt yourself could also mean, um, quit your job. Hurt yourself could also mean, you know, you take your anger out on someone who doesn't deserve it. So that's, you know, I choose to be selfish instead. Number three is a painful one, but a true one. And, uh, that, that goes to uh, number five, which I'll, I'll, I'll get to that in just a bit, but um, these are kind of co uh, correlated. So I'm sorry if you look at me a little different after that, but it's true. Um, for whatever fucked up psychological reason that I, like I said, I'm just putting my emotions out there. I'm not telling you that these are practical solutions for you or for anybody or even for me. It's just, re it's just obstacles that I've had to put in my way healthy and unhealthy, harmful and selfless, um, to not kill myself. Uh, number four, people are struggling way worse, uh, with way worse things. Um, this one can help and hurt. Um, you know, it's good to be humble and it's good to crush your ego and tell yourself that, Hey, you don't have it that bad. People would kill or give their kidney to be in your shoes. Um, but it's sometimes it helps and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you don't care because you only feel what you feel. You, you can only witness and deal with the crisis that you have in front of you. Um, so that's a tricky one. But if you can see through the fog and know that people do have it worse and that you should be lucky um, and you know you have beautiful kids, you have a job that you once worked really, really hard to get. You have a, a, an amazing, thoughtful, and caring, compassionate spouse who's there for you. There's people that don't even have um, lungs to breathe their air in. There are people that don't have limbs, um, and that does not stop them from crushing life. I'm sure they have their own struggles, but it's just like knives. You're a fully capable, bipedal human you still have your hands, you still have your skin, you still have your, your tongue, you can still express yourself, you can still press the little red button and record and transmit your thoughts out there. Like, you have to tell yourself that other people have it worse and that you actually have it pretty good. Um, 
sometimes that's not the most productive thing, but sometimes it's the only way to get through the fog. Number five, and this is the most important one that if you've made it this far, please take this away from what I'm talking about uh, because this is a a bit of a revelation for people who don't understand. Um, Number five, the fifth reason why I haven't killed myself is because what if it's the depression talking? I, the depression for me, people have bipolar. I've never been diagnosed. I'm scared to get diagnosed. Maybe that'll be for a different video. Um, I haven't gone to the doctor about that. You know, I don't like talking about these things, but they get in the way of creativity and they get in the way of the, the juice and the nectar and the sweetness of life. They get in the way of success. They get in the way of productivity and they get in the way of love and how you identify and how you interface with the world. So that's why I'm putting these thoughts out there. Damn, this video is way longer than I wanted it to be. And I apologize for that. I don't like doing these long winded rants. Sorry, but this is a weird subject. As you can tell, it's a a pain in the dick to get through, but I'm going to get through it. We're almost done, folks. Um, It's the depression talking. Sometimes the, the voice of fuck you, you're worthless, you're a piece of shit, nobody likes you, um, they all know that you don't belong here. The, the, the imposter syndrome that we have heard about um, is very real. And I've grown on my strong days. Like I, I convinced myself that that's not me, that's the depression talking. Wh- whatever you want to call that, look at it as a, a shadowy, uh, luminous figure um, kind of like venom on Spider-Man. Like there's a difference between Peter Parker and when he's afflicted with the venom, right? So it kind of feels like that sometimes, uh, not to sound so melodramatic, but just to illustrate my point, like it's not you, it's the depression. There's a difference. You have to draw a line in the sand when you are in the thick of it and you cannot, um, see a difference between you and the fog. It's very easy to get lost in the woods. So, when, you know, it, I have to, I have to tell myself sometimes this isn't me. This is that. Um, it doesn't excuse you being an asshole. It doesn't excuse bullshit behaviors. It doesn't excuse anything. You test a lot of people's patience and compassion with you. And believe me, like those aren't fuses that go on hundreds and thousands of miles. Those are short fuses. People have a very limited bandwidth and you can't take them for granted, right? So, even your kids, like don't expect them to carry your slack. Don't expect them to push through the bullshit with you. You have to do that yourself. You, you have to, whether if it's medicine or whatever, like I said, I'm not giving solutions, but whatever, however you get through, whatever your flashlight is to get through this fog, you have to know that you are not the fog. And it's really easy to forget that when you feel one with it, when it's all you can think about and you can't escape it, you can't even get out of your bed, you can't take your shoes off, it's hard to escape it. So I have to tell myself, this isn't me, this is that. Um, Number six, talking about it helps. That's why I'm doing this. Um, When you are this transparent, people message you in private and say, dude, that's exactly how I feel. Um, when I watch art like Bojack Horseman that so openly talks about depression and pain and self-harm and anxiety and all these things, it's like, wait a second, I feel like that and it helps so much. Um, I'll tell you what doesn't help, Nine Inch Nails and listening to Hurt on repeat, that does not help, but talking about it with other people and expressing yourself um, helps leaps and bounds and it's difficult to do that. Um, especially with other people that are struggling more than you. Actually, I encourage you to, to talk about your struggles with those people who are struggling more than you. And, you know, it's one of those, you put, you're put exactly in your place and you see just how ridiculous, um, you can lose your perspective sometimes and you can be caught in the ridicule, the ridicularity of it all. And you say, wait a second, what am I, what am I doing here? Um, if you can shoot yourself with that adrenaline of reality, do so, right? So talking about it, sharing it helps. That's why I'm doing this. So look, um, I am not someone who has a total grip all the time. Um, 
but I have made it this far and I'm happy to say that I'm approaching the new decade and um, I'm bringing my entire wagon of of history with me into this next next decade and I hope to have learned something from it. And if you're going through something, yeah, feel free to DM me and, and reach out to me and I might not be able to offer anything other than a good ear. So know that up front, but um, it's good to talk about this you have to talk about this, uh, especially nowadays on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and TikTok and Snapchat, where everybody's just curating their greatest hits and their highlight reel of life. Um, it's really easy to start comparing yourself to others and saying, well, why are they happy? You know, I have that. Why don't I feel that way or whatever? Um, I've been in the thick of that mirage as well. And it's bullshit, which is why a couple videos ago, I made a video about my insecurities because it was like my way of saying, you can't hurt me. You can't talk shit about me. I'm aware of what's going on with me and I'm going to persevere, right? So putting it out there really helps. Um, and I suggest you, if you don't feel the, this way, wonderful, but lend lend a helping hand and lend, lend an ear to someone that you think might, you know, just asking somebody how are you? Yeah, but how are you really can go a long way and, and you'll just see what you what you unearth and what you unlock when you just ask uh, an intelligent and uh, curious, compassionate question from a good place. I think uh, people surprise you. And uh, the seventh and final reason is life is ultimately too beautiful sometimes. And it's true. Um, it's really easy to be depressed when you're stuck in your house 24-7. It's really easy to want to hurt yourself when you're thinking about um, stuff that happened when you were a little kid or 20 years ago. Like, it's really easy. But when you get out and you experience life, um, those are good distractions. And I'm not just talking about playing a video game or watching a good movie sometimes. I'm talking about, you know, this past Thanksgiving, I was with my family and uh, I was at my, my aunt and uncle's farm and being able to be so close to the animals, the turkeys, the chickens, the goats, the donkeys, the, the Texas longhorns, and seeing my, my children's reaction to these, to these wild animals um, was an incredible experience. And, and I don't think they'll ever forget that. And, and life is beautiful and can be beautiful sometimes. And that's really the last one on my list because truthfully, it's the last one that I get to when I'm in the thick of it. But when you have those moments, I think it's worth crawling to that first down, to use a football metaphor, um, to get closer to home base, um, you know, how, by any means necessary, when you experience uh, just the wondrous joy that being a human can possibly afford sometimes, going outside and experiencing uh, oneness with nature, I think is helpful. Um, but also making other people laugh and being around people that want to laugh or, or dance or whatever that is. But the, the, com the communal nature of everything, um, I think is helpful. So I'm getting a phone call. I got to go. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far, let me know in the comments. Cause I'll be honestly surprised. I somehow doubt it, but I love you guys so much and uh, I can't believe I made this. And um, just to quote my uncle from a video that I made eight years ago or so, some shit like that, keep a force filled around your heart. I love you.